Hello again, I'm Mike Mazzalongo and you're watching the Bible Talk video blog. Today's uh, blog item is entitled, The Gay Nation. It seems that the surest way to secure your 15 minutes of fame in America these days is to declare to the world that you're gay. Homosexuals are literally tripping over each other in order to be the first in their respective fields of endeavor to come out and thereby clinch their spot in the Gay Hall of Fame. Whether it be in sports or politics, entertainment or academia, being gay now comes with some kind of mystique that simply excelling in your area of expertise cannot produce. Forget the notion that this lifestyle was once considered shameful. In our present gay nation, those who experience same-sex attraction and very publicly acknowledge this fact wear their declaration like a badge of honor and are seen as heroes by the media who portray these people as this generation's civil rights icons in the spirit of Martin Luther King or, or Jackie Robinson. It is also assumed that all Americans should accept and even cheer these people and embrace their values. Not to do so is to be on the wrong side of history because America is fast becoming a nation where it will be a crime to even question the naturalness of the gay lifestyle. Meanwhile, Christians are asking themselves, how did we, how did we get to this? And, and where does this country go from here? Now, the short answer to these questions is that a determined group with a pro-gay agenda successfully lobbied liberal political leaders who fused gay rights with minority rights in an attempt to bolster their civil rights credentials. This partnership was powerfully enabled by pliant media outlets sympathetic to homosexual issues and progress. Now, mix these together in a social scene where traditional Christian values were waning and you have a celebration of a lifestyle that is clearly condemned in the Bible and was rejected by a vast majority of the American people not many years ago. Now, I'm not a prophet and therefore I can't foresee where all of this will take us in the next 20 years, but as a Christian, I know what I will be doing as we go forward. First of all, contrary to massive pro-gay propaganda advocating the homosexual lifestyle as natural, I will continue to point out that there has yet to be any scientific proof that one is born with a gay gene and that despite the fact that genetics as well as environment may provide some elementary disposition towards same-sex attraction, being gay is still a matter of influence and choice and thus a moral issue. I will also continue to teach that the Bible clearly presents homosexual activity as sinful. Romans chapter 1 verse 26 and 7, 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 9, 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 10, simply a few verses in the New Testament that condemns homosexual activity. Now, in order to make the scriptures say otherwise requires rejecting parts of the New Testament as inspired and forcing other sections to conveniently fit a pro-gay conclusion, an exercise that clearly violates both the content and the spirit of Bible teaching on this subject. And finally, I will continue to pray for those who experience same-sex attraction for whatever reason and ask the Lord to strengthen them in obeying the commands of God that lead to holiness, peace of mind, and eternal life, rather than the demands of the flesh that can only lead to sin, sorrow, and condemnation. Now, there may not be much hope in turning this nation from the path it has chosen to follow in accepting a lifestyle that the Bible has consistently rejected for over 3,500 years. However, I can provide a witness for what is right to this generation and know that God will use it in the future as a basis for judging its wickedness. Well, I'm Mike Mazzalongo and you've been watching the Bible Talk video blog. God bless you. We'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.